Hi, I'm Ben, and we're going to perform an inspection of the kitchen. So, according to the Home Inspection Standards of Practice, a kitchen really isn't part of a home inspection, but you'll find as a home inspector that your clients, homeowners, home sellers, home buyers, will expect you to check out the kitchen, maybe the appliances and electricals and things like that. So, what I like to do is share how I perform a kitchen inspection and you can take that and build upon it and make it your own. The first thing I do is I simply look around and see what we have in the kitchen before we get to any components of the kitchen system. So what we have here is an electric appliance, stove, oven, and a vent hood and light, some countertops. I hear the dishwasher. So we have a, a built-in dishwasher. I'll turn that on. Um, sometimes I'll ask the seller or home occupant to turn that on. We have a, a sink. Um, I'll run hot and cold water at the sink and test the garbage disposal. Um, we have a refrigerator. I see some lights and a window and GFCIs, the floor, the ceiling, the walls, some doors. So um, that's the basic first step I do. I get a general good idea of what is ahead. Now I break the system up, the kitchen system, into components. First, the cooking. And here is the stove and oven and hood. Goes right up into the attic. We'll get to that later. And what I do is I make sure all the heating elements turn on. Be very careful. So I crank each one. You don't have to be an appliance expert. Just try to get it to work and turn on for you. Now what you want to do is turn on the oven. If you turn on the oven, don't let the oven go all day. Um, make sure you turn it off somehow. So check the elements. And check out the oven. General condition. You don't have to measure anything. We're not measuring things. Temperature differences, delta T, uh, actual temperature that the appliance achieves in relation to what was intended. We don't do any of that stuff as home inspectors. We just want to make sure that everything is kind of working and our clients know whether something isn't or not. So all the heating elements I'm trying to get turned on. Looks like they're turning on for me. I'll turn them all off. That's the important part. Don't let anything run. So I've got the oven going and yeah, the heating elements look in good shape. Just using my hand. One of the best tools to measure for temperature is your hand. Don't leave home without it. And then let's see if I can get this to turn on. There we go. Uh, again, I'm not an expert. I see so many appliances. I'm not an expert in any of them, but I'm just trying to get it to turn on. It's all turning on. Looks pretty clean too and it exhausts outside. So every kitchen exhaust hood must exhaust outside. It can't exhaust in the attic. Nice. I like that. Now I want every stove and oven to have an anti-tip device. I don't want this oven falling over. This one doesn't. I don't see anything in the back there. So that's a defect. I'm gonna point that out. It's very easy to fix. It's like a little bracket. So I'll cross my fingers and I'll take a picture and I'll put that in the report as a reminder that something is not quite right. And the cabinets, they open and close. They go right by the appliance. Sometimes they snag. So I'm not an expert on countertops or backsplashes or appliances, but I'll take a look around. Just trying to give my client an idea of its general condition looking for obvious problems. So summary with the stove, I'm a little concerned with the anti-tip device missing. Now if I'm doing a home inspection, I'll turn on the dishwasher for my client and myself as part of the process, but ideally um, it would be ready to go with dirty dishes so that when I turn it on, we actually get something done like the dishes so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make sure that the the surround is good um, the door itself the racks 
Maybe I'll do a little spin, um, take a look at the spray. Everything seems to be good. The interior looks really good. I see the gasket. I could even touch it. When you touch it, it kind of compresses. It feels good. Um, and then uh, it could be secured here with some fasteners. Um, you could also give it a, a pull or a, a movement there. Looks really good. Um, down below, there should be a, a guard there and there shouldn't be any water, signs of water or movement of the dishwasher itself. I, again, I don't want to break it, but it's fastened right there, I can see. So that's really good. So I'll let it run. You know, we're not experts on all the models of the dishwasher, but um, if I can get it to run a short cycle, great. If I can also document the model number for my client, usually it's on the side. Oh, here it is. So there's the model number and some other um, numbers there, like the serial number. I'll document that. Maybe I'll put it in the report, but at least I'll have it if somebody needs it later on. What if it leaks? Well, what if I turn it on and the dishwasher leaks on the floor? Well, good. I'm supposed to find problems. So um, if the dishwasher leaks on the floor, I'm going to prevent any damage. I'm going to clean it up as fast as possible and then I'll tag this unit as a defect and not to turn it on, I wanna notify the occupants or the seller and my client as well that it leaked when I turned it on. I'm not responsible for repairing the dishwasher. I found that the dishwasher leaked when I turned it on using normal operating controls just like anybody would've and it would've leaked on them. But my job is maybe to find problems, right? Before anyone else does. If I observe a defect, and I think it's a problem that should be repaired, it, I'm obligated to put it in my re inspection report. So in my report, I said, I'll turn it on, it leaked. I'll document that with a video or a picture of the leak and the water, I'll clean it up, I'll put it in the report as a correction that's needed. Okay, this one is not leaking, but make sure it's turned on. Okay, I think we got it, hmm. we'll see. Let's continue with the rest of the kitchen and see what happens. Okay, I'm at the kitchen sink. I'm going to run water at the sink, hot and cold. Turn it a little bit. I see I have a dishwasher sprayer. So I'm gonna spray that. That looks good, goes right back. And then I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and then take a look at the underside of the garbage disposal, the drain pipes, the fittings, the connections. I'm gonna take a look at the discharge tube the connection between the, the garbage disposer and the dishwasher. We know we have a dishwasher, I like to do that first. And then I'll run my hand underneath every valve, the cold and hot water valve, and shut off valves that I see under here. And I'll take a look for any electrical wiring or any loose plumbing pipes or signs, indications of prior water leaks. And then get my flashlight out and take a look for plumbing leaks at the drains at the traps, at the gaskets. I guess that's a high loop, well, I'm not sure, if, but we'll let it go. And then there's the electrical wiring for the garbage disposal and it's missing a clamp. There has to be a clamp right there where the wire goes into the housing, the motor housing. And here are the water valves, hot and cold water valves, supplying water to the fixture itself. And there's the spray dish sprayer fixture feature. I'm going to move the hot water from one sink to the other and then take another look underneath. Now I could stay here all day, but that's not my job. I have a limited window to perform a visual only inspection to find the problems that happen to occur while I'm here. That's what I'm responsible for. Not future plumbing leaks, but leaks that I see during the inspection at the time of the inspection. Okay, so this all looks good. Next, GFCIs, because I have a sink and I have a kitchen. GFCIs are required all over the kitchen. So what tools do I use for a kitchen inspection? Well, here's my simple tool bag right here. Not much, I've got a flashlight, GFCI tester, volt tester, little screwdriver, uh, moisture meter, uh, here's an infrared camera protection, 
So um, basically, I'm just going to go around with my GFCI tester and test the GFCIs. I'm going to use my flashlight to look underneath the sink and behind the stove, use my moisture meter and infrared to look for water leaks. And use my GFCI tester. So that's a light indicator that is properly wired. And I'll use my tester there, test button on the GFCI itself. And all counter receptacles need to be GFCI protected and tested. And I can use my tester there. I like to use both the test button of the manufacturer and mine of my tester. And I'll take out my infrared camera and I'll use it on the hot water. Obviously the dishwasher is hot. Just looking for any anomalies. Then I'll open up the sink cabinets, use my infrared. And that's what it looks like, kind of cool. Using infrared helps me be a better home inspector and it distinguishes me from other home inspectors because I can see things that other home inspectors can't. So I'm going to use an infrared camera to look for anomalies in the ceiling, anything unusual. There's a light bulb out. And there's the heating elements for the stove. They all work. Open up the oven, infrared. Helps me see heat. There's the heating elements, they're on fire. I'll just move back and check it out. And that's all hot. Again, I'm not measuring the actual temperature range between a cold appliance and a hot appliance. Just looking for functionality and anomalies, information that may help my client. I'll open and close in the windows and doors. That looks good. I'll take a quick look at the countertops and cabinetry. Uh, the shelves seem to be fastened well to the wall, so that's good there. And the flooring. The flooring is really nicely done. I don't see any major damage, cracks of the masonry, tile, and the ceiling. I don't see any watermarks. And that would be a cosmetic issue, but my client may be concerned about those things. I'm looking for the major problems, the major defects. Now the refrigerator, can't really see behind the refrigerator or around the refrigerator. So I'm just looking for major damage and usually there's um, some damage if there's gonna be some on the handle or the gasket around the gasket door or something inside. So I'll take a look at the drawers. But if you wanted to do a step-by-step -step inspection of a refrigerator, InterNACHI has a refrigerator inspection checklist. So you can incorporate that into your inspection software. And if you're using a mobile device, you don't have to remember everything that's in the checklist. You can just go right down step-by-step -step and inspect the refrigerator or any system in the kitchen. I'll open and close a representative number of drawers and handles, take a look at how they operate. And the cabinetry looks really good. And also the lights. So I'll turn on the lights. That's the only switch in the kitchen. So we have a garbage disposal. I'll turn that on. And I'll go back underneath and make sure it's not leaking. And we have a light fixture above. Oh, behind. There we go. So all in all, the kitchen is in pretty good shape. I don't like the safety device, the anti-tip device missing on the stove, but everything else looks really good in the kitchen system. And we broke it down step by step with the components, the stove, oven, the hood, the dishwasher, the sink, the water lines, looking for plumbing leaks, the GFCI, the cabinets, the flooring, the ceiling, the window, the lights. Looks pretty good. So one major recommendation, and it's a safety feature, and every stove range appliance needs that anti-tip safety device. So that was it for the kitchen inspection. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next inspection. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. See you next time.